In this video, we'll see some examples of how to use properties of logarithms. The properties look a little something like this. On the left-hand side of this slide, we've got the exponential rules. The fact that when we take two exponential terms and multiply them together, if the bases are the same, then we can just add the exponents. The analogous logarithmic rule is that if we take the logarithm of a product, then what we get is the sum of the logarithms. So if we have two things multiplied together inside a logarithm, then that breaks up as the sum of the two individual logarithms. Similarly, since when we have two exponential terms divided by each other, we subtract the exponents, the analogous logarithmic rule is that if we take the log of a fraction, then what we get is the log of the top minus the log of the bottom. Finally, when we have a power raised to a power, we multiply those exponents together. And so when we have the logarithm of a power, we multiply the power times the logarithm of the base. All of these log rules come from the fact that exponentiation and logarithms are inverse processes. So that's why the rules might look a little strange for logarithms, but they all come from that principle that the logarithm and the exponent are inverses of each other. Now let's actually put these rules into practice. We want to write the log base 2 of x times the square root of x squared plus 1 as a sum of logarithms. So the first thing we notice here is that this thing inside our logarithm is a product. It's x times that big square root thing. So we can use our logarithm rule that says that we can rewrite that as the logarithm of the first thing plus the logarithm of the second thing. So when you have a product inside a logarithm, that breaks up as the sum of the two separate logarithms. All right, what about this square root term? Is there anything we can do with that? Well, as we've seen a few times before, we can rewrite that square root as something raised to the one-half power. So let's rewrite this square root of x, plus, uh, x squared plus 1 as x squared plus 1 all raised to the one-half power. And now we can use the log rule that says that if you have something raised to a power inside a logarithm, you can take that power and bring it down out front. So we get log base 2 of x plus 1 half times the log base 2 of x squared plus 1. Now you might be thinking, is there a way that I can break up this term, where I have the log base 2 of x squared plus 1? Is that maybe the log of x squared plus the log of 1, or something like that? And it turns out the answer is no. So when we have a sum inside a logarithm, this thing here can't be simplified any further. So we have to be really careful and make sure that we're not trying to mix up our log rules. So when you have a product inside the logarithm, something times something else, you get the sum of the individual logarithms. But when you have a sum inside a logarithm, you can't break that up. Let's do a slightly different problem here. So let's say that we've got the log base b of 2 has a name, we'll call it x, and the log base b of 3, we'll call that y, and now what we want to do is rewrite the log base b of 12 in terms of x and y. So actually computing these numbers isn't going to help here since we don't know what that base b is but we can rewrite 12 in terms of 2s and 3s. So if I rewrite the log base b of 12 as the log base b of 2 times 2 times 3, then my log rule that says that when I have a product inside a logarithm, I can break it up into a sum of logarithms, tells me that this is the log base b of 2 plus the log base b of 2 plus the log base b of 3. And log base 2, or log base b of 2, has a name, we'll call it x. This is called x, and this is called y. So that means that altogether, our expression is just equal to 2x plus y. So these problems really test that you know your log rules. So our calculator isn't going to be any help here, because we don't know what that base b is. Let's try one more. So same definition for x and y, and now we want to rewrite the log base b of 3 divided by the square root of 2. Well, it might be a little easier to see how to rewrite this in terms of 2s and 3s now. So inside our logarithm, we have 3 divided by radical 2. We know that when we take the log of a fraction, we get the log of the top minus the log of the bottom. Log base b of 3, that's the thing that's called y. What about the log base b of the square root of 2? Well, again, remember we can rewrite square roots as something raised to the 1 half power. And our log rule tells us that we can take that power. When we have something raised to a power inside of the log, we can bring the power out front. And that gives us y minus 1 half times the log base b of 2 
but the log base b of 2, that's called x, so this is y minus 1 half x, and we're done.